Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video. In this video, I want to cover two topics with you all. First off, channel changes that we're going to have starting today. And also, of course, the game manager for you, RPG Major Games, which, trust me, is going to be your best friend from now on. So, let's get started. Alright, so let's start with the channel changes that we're gonna apply starting today. First off, and I'm probably sure that a lot of you saw this coming, but I'm still gonna say it anyway. We're finally out of the basic content. That means that if you have followed every single of my videos thus far, we are finally done explaining every single basic mechanics on how RPG Maker tools operates and the basic core on how implementing RPG using RPG Maker tools, whether it is MZ, MV, VX, Ace, VX, 2003, whatever it is that you're using. If you saw every single of my tutorials, you are now able to create a basic RPG with all this knowledge, which is awesome. But it also means that starting off today, we are going to review a lot more advanced tutorials, which are going to cover puzzles traps, game mechanics, mini games, voice acting, creating your own assets, parallax mapping, plugins, design principles. We are gonna see it all on this channel. So I had a lot of good stuff in line waiting for you all and I cannot wait to share it with you all. Also, I'd like to give a special shout out. Starting off today when I'm recording this video, we have finally breached the 51st subscribers on this channel and i couldn't tell you how much i appreciate it so if you're one of them and you're currently watching this video i want to tell thank you so much for subscribing you are awesome and if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel i highly recommend that you do so because you do not want to miss what is coming next all right so enough with the chit chat and let's get down with today's tutorial and what I wanted to show and explain to you, which is now going to be your new best friend, the game manager. All right, so it's not a long principle to grasp or anything like that, but it's just something that you will want to implement inside your game. And honestly, you will need to do so if you intend to follow every single tutorials that are coming next, because that is something that I'm going to use fairly often. And so in order to make your life easier, I highly recommend you that you do exactly what I'm about to do here and I'm about to show you. First off, we're not going to need the music manager and the cheat code, everything from my past tutorials. So I'm just going to delete those and we're going to start with a clean slate. What we're going to do is that your first common event is going to be called game manager. Now the trigger is going to be parallel and the switch is going to be is the game started. That means that this thing is going to run all the time as soon as your players starts a new game. And it needs to stay that way. So whatever it is the way that you intend to create or start your MPG, make sure that this switch is the first thing you turn on. Because the game manager, what it is what its main role is going to be, is to make your life so much easier by providing you information in real time that you will need to implement a lot of mechanics. And we're gonna probably reiterate on the game manager as time goes on, but for today, we're simply gonna implement a couple of variables that we're gonna use in the incoming videos. And most likely in future tutorials, we'll get back to the game manager to add more and more contents in it. So make sure you create it right now and do the exact same thing that I'm gonna do. Now, the first thing really that we want to capture is the position of the hero or the player, whatever you want to call it. I always call it hero X. And what this variable contains is inside the game data, character player map X position. So that means that whatever is the X position on the map of your hero is going to be stored inside a variable every single frames. So you will know always whenever, what is the X position of your hero. And of course, we're going to do the same for hero Y. So we'll know exactly where our player is standing at all times. And trust me, 
this is probably the most useful variables you will ever create. Now, another thing that we're gonna do is use the jet location information. Now, back in RPG Maker Envy, what I used to do was to get the region ID that my hero was standing on using the variable hero x and hero y that we just created. But we don't have to do this anymore because RPG Maker MZ has a new little tool which allows us to directly ask them for the region ID where our, our hero is standing on. So we're just gonna create a new uh, variable which is we're gonna call hero region ID and it's going to store the region ID that the player is currently standing on, if any. And once again, that's gonna be used for future mechanics we're gonna implement. Next in line, something that you need to do, and trust me, it's gonna be useful. The map size in X value and the map size in Y value. You could also like call it width and height if you want. So the map width. Whoops, god damn it. And the math height. And now some of you are gonna say, but there's no game data that allows you to store that information. Right, there's not. That's why we're gonna use our first script. And, and I know exactly what you're gonna say. Wait, 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 script. That's too complicated for me. I don't understand that stuff. But you probably didn't say the word stuff. Don't stress it. It's super easy to capture the game data for the map width and the current map height that your hero are standing on. And I'm gonna show you, show it to you right now. It's super, super simple. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that whenever you use script, it is case sensitive. That means that if for instance, I write something like this and you write it this way, using a capital D instead of a lowercase d, it is not going to work. So be super careful about what I'm going to show you and make sure that your lower cases are the exact lower cases I have and your upper cases are the exact same as well. So in order to get the width of a map, you're going to use dollar sign, data, all lower cases, capital M, AP format, dot, width. All lowercase that's it so what it's going to do is that this variable is going to capture the width of every single maps you are standing in all the time always and we're going to use this to implement some cool mechanics cannot wait to show you now we're going to do the exact same thing with the map height except that instead of using data map dot width as you probably already guessed we're going to do we're going to use data map dot height and it was that easy. That's all you need to do. Not that hard, right? Okay, cool. Then let's move on to the next information that we're going to need to register, which is the map ID, which is also going to be very useful. So map identifier. It's going to be the game data map ID. Cool. Oh, <laughs> nice. It's the first one. So let's just click on this and we're done here. We're also going to need to cover the arrows direction and the arrows direction is basically is facing left right top or bottom so let's just create a new one hero direction apply okay and the game data once again character player direction there we go and finally the last one which uh, is sometimes useful to have because um of how you can you want to implement conditions is the gold party variable. So gold party, game data, other gold, there we go. And that's it for today. All right. Except that it's not exactly it yet. What we're also gonna do is that since there's gonna have a lot of stuff like this inside our game manager, and trust me, like it's gonna be like paragraphs long. Something that we need to do right now for ourselves in the future in order for it to be a lot easier to make modifications without looking for some stuff for ours is using comments. So hero information like this so that it's, it's green, it's neat, it's easy to spot. 
So everything related to the hero is gonna be right here. So, and we're also gonna use a new comment, which is also gonna be, you probably already guessed it, the map information. So what we're gonna do is select this, hold control to select, uh, sorry, hold shift to select all three of those. Then control X, control V, we're gonna paste this there. And we're gonna have the hero information and for now we're gonna have a new section which is gonna be misc information because that is everything that has not enough information to put it inside a section which in this case is only the gold party variable which contains the amount of gold if you want you can put it inside the arrow information or add the section called uh group information or whatever it's really up to you how you want to organize your game manager so that you can easily find uh informations and easily iterate or modify anything but just make it so that it's easy on yourself you don't have to do exactly the way that i do it but this is how i like to sort my code with the game manager but the way that you want to do it is entirely up to you so that's it that's it for the games manager for today it's that simple make sure to save so we don't lose anything but what it's going to do is that it's going to give you a whole bunch of information that is easily accessible through variables that you've created. And those variables will also be inside your first page or at least your first two page of variables so that you can easily access them. And the reason why you want this this way is because you're going to use them probably a lot starting from now, it's specifically everything related to the arrow. So arrow X, Y, region ID, and a rose direction we're gonna use this quite often all right that's it for today's video on the game manager make sure to like if you have any comments or questions make sure to leave them below inside the comment section and as always i'll see you later for a new video bye goodbye